Morning Endeavour, welcome to Flight Day 8. Morning, good morning Houston, and we're ready to have some more fun. Yeah, I thought you might be. Yeah, that was a great selection, Carl. I really loved it. Oh, you ain't heard nothing yet.
a nice night down there. Now, Brent, we have the weather radar and the uh, visible satellite picture up on our screens right now, and there is a front coming by. We're clear now, but we expect some uh, squall weather towards morning here. Glad you got a good look. Yeah, Tom, uh, we just passed right overhead, and uh, we could see that stuff out to the north and west. We're just concerned that it goes through Florida by the time you guys are ready to come home. Whenever. Endeavor, no reply. 90 seconds till a teacher's handover. And Endeavor, we have a great view of the Cape going underneath you right now. those lacy webs across the, the states as we went over it. Look forward to getting a chance to see that again, Brian. Yeah, you know, you'll have a great time. Your conversation with South Africa is still on at one hour and 40 minutes. Okay. 
Okay, we copy, and we're setting up for that now. Thanks, Winston. Is uh, Koichi done with his exercise and yet? If not, I'll call him on the west side. I didn't have as, as much lint as the uh, that of uh, IMUs, and I cleaned them off. Okay, thanks. During your uh, off-duty time, did you get to play Go? Yes, uh, we demonstrated the uh, very famous uh, Go uh, play in a novel of a noble award novelist uh, Kawabata. And, uh, Dan is a good player, and uh, we re really enjoyed uh, the game. Can we ask who won? Well, actually, uh, Dan gave me this uh, good part, and uh, I was playing the person who, who won the game, so I was supposed to be one, but uh, it took so long, and we didn't come to the uh, the end of the game. Okay, uh, we're going LOS here. You sure have a lot to space, a lot of territory to play that game up there. There we Houston. Are you ready to talk to Johannesburg, South Africa? Yes, sir. We sure are, sorry. Okay, here they come. Johannesburg, this is Houston. Please give Endeavor a call. Endeavor, this is Johannesburg. How do you hear me? Johannesburg, we read you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the Space Shuttle Endeavor. Ryan, Winston, Koichi, thank you so much for giving us a few minutes to talk to you. We really appreciate it. This is Teddy School in South Africa. We have some students from ProTech who have some fascinating questions for you. And we're going to go to our first who is Sachin. Over to you, Sachin. Hi, Captain. My name is Sachin. I'm from Kempton Park. We are students of ProTech, and we really consider this a great privilege because this is really a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And my question to you is, how long have you been in space, and when can we expect your return? Well, actually, we just past the seven-day mark uh, in space. We've been up for uh, just over uh, seven days and one hour right now, and we're going to be up here for about two more days before we come home. Our next question comes from a young lady, Imelda. Over to you, Imelda. Hi, this is Imelda. I just want to ask Captain Brian, how did he choose to become an astronaut? Well, I'll tell you, I'll start off answering that question. I uh, have have been a Navy pilot most of my adult life, and I chose to become an astronaut because I thought that would be a nice next step, a nice next challenge for me in the work that I was already doing in aviation and science. And uh, I tell you, since being up here on my first flight, I haven't regretted that decision at all. This has been a tremendous experience, and I wish you all could be here with me and, and share it. It's really a, a tremendous experience. Ryan, Winston Koichi, good day. This is Nikita. Our next question will come from Ashley. Yeah, I'm Ashley from Soweto. Uh, I heard that I heard rumors about like uh, you're gonna land on Mars soon. Is it true? Ashley, one thing to know there about Mars. Okay, you want to know if we're going to land on Mars soon. Well, I have to answer, uh, no, we're not going to land on Mars soon. However, we at NASA do uh, have plans and work, uh, long-term plans and work to go to Mars. I think probably the next big step will be to go back to the moon. As you know, we walked on the moon uh, about 25, 26 years ago. The next big step will go back to the moon, and then hopefully from there we'll go on to Mars. But I don't think that's going to happen any time soon. I will add, though, that by the time you get to be my age and are flying in space, maybe you'll be one of the first people on Mars. <laughs> Thanks so much, gentlemen. Our next question comes from another young lady, Candace. Over to you, Candace. Hi there, Winston. Um, I spoke to you before about preparation mentally and physically. Well, what you experienced in space, well, were you prepared for it completely? Okay, I... I think I was as best prepared as I possibly could have been. The training we have is very, very excellent, but of course we have no way of truly simulating zero-G. The only way to experience it is to come up here. 
and uh, physically we all have gotten along very well in space. Of course, our Commander Brian and uh, our MS-1 uh, Leroy Chow have flown before, but the other four of us were brand new. But you'd be amazed at how quickly your body adapts. I felt a little uneasiness the first day, but I was not ill at all, and we all feel great, and we're having just a, a wonderful time up here. Konnichiwa, um, Koichiwa Kata. I hope I got that right. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time to talk to us. We've got a young gentleman here by the name of Sam who, who really feels that you gentlemen are a great role model for him. Um, and he's got a question for you. <laughs> I just wanted to know, um, when you're viewing the Earth from space, do you, does it have any spiritual effect on you? Well, we've been in space for uh, almost a week, and uh, I was very surprised to, to see my uh, body's adaptation into this microgravity uh, so quickly. And uh, we are feeling very good, and uh, we are doing uh, our job in here, and uh, it's been a great experience for me. Very much, uh, Kanichiwi. Um, our next question comes from another one of our students, it's Yassam. Over to you, Yassam. Hi. I'd like to find out uh, how space exploration will benefit us in the future. Uh, that was a little bit broken, but I, b I believe your question was about how sp space would benefit us in the future. Is that correct? Uh, you saw, would you ask the question again? Um, I'd like to know how space uh, exploration will benefit us on Earth and in the future. Yeah, that, that's a, a very good question, and it's one that, um, that we consider all the time because everything that we do has to have a purpose, and that purpose is generally to better some portion of our lives on Earth. It turns out we can come to space and do uh, a lots, of, lots of things we can do that we cannot do on Earth. Uh, we can do medical experiments up here. We can perhaps invent new drugs to uh, combat diseases. Uh, we may be able to grow new crystals to be able to run faster computers. Uh, the, the list is endless, and we could talk about that for, uh, for many, many uh, hours about how space can benefit it. But it's not limited to any one area. It really spans uh, every part of the everyday life on Earth, and we hope to be able to improve it from space. Astronaut Scott, um, we understand that you, you have three objectives on this mission, one of them being to retrieve a Japanese communication satellite. Um, we also have a question now from Sean, also one of our students, in connection with the mission. Okay. Um, I, Dr. Scott, and his crew, my name is Sean. I'd like to know what's the purpose of your mission, and how do you retrieve your satellite? Well, you're absolutely right. Uh, the, uh, we had several uh, main objectives on this mission, and uh, one was which to uh, retrieve the Japanese satellite space fly unit. Uh, the other one was to deploy and then retrieve a satellite called the OAST, O-A-S-T, satellite. And uh, the way that we went about those retrievals is by doing a rendezvous. And uh, the rendezvous uh, involved basic orbital mechanics. In other words, we had to plan our launch for a certain time and day so that we have enough fuel and en en enough time to catch up to the satellite and approach it. We, uh, we used a, what's called an R-bar approach, whereas we flew out of the Earth's radius, a vector along the Earth's radius, up to the satellite. We opened up the payload bay doors, and Koichi Wakata here on the, my uh, left operated the robot arm to reach out and grapple the satellites and berth them both inside the payload bay. Now, that's a very quick and simple explanation of a, a somewhat complex uh, task, but uh, it, it was, it's really, really fascinating to participate in it. And really, to see the crew operate as a single unit was great. We had uh, myself sending commands to the satellite through the computer. Our commander, uh, Brian Duffy, was actually flying the uh, vehicle, actually with hands-on, a stick and throttle flying. When he flew it close enough and stabilized the Koichi, we sat with the robot arm and brought it into the bay. It really was quite uh, an event and quite a sight to behold, even for those of us who were participating. Um, my next question is to Winston Scott. It's Sean Mike here. 
I just want to find out about the EVAs, otherwise known as spacewalks. Could you tell us more about the spacewalks, um, if you have any planned, if you've done any yet? Oh, I sure can. Uh, this flight consisting of two spacewalks. The first was done by Leroy Chow and Dr. Dan Barry. The uh, second spacewalk was the one that I participated on, and Dr. Chow participated on that one with me. The purpose of these spacewalks was to, uh, to test out uh, equipment and structures and techniques and so on that we might use in building the International Space Station. The second purpose was to test out improvements to our uh, suits, our extravehicular mobility unit, our space suits. And I guess that was the highlight of my space uh, spacewalk. Even though it was a very busy six and a half hours of spacewalking, the most important part, I think, was the 35 minutes that I used to stand still in the most cold environment that we could uh, achieve. And I activated the thermal, uh, the, the heating units on my suit to see whether or not they would keep me warm. And I'm happy to report that they, they worked very, very well. I never once felt uncomfortable out there in the cold of space. So anyway, we've had two EVAs, and uh, I just enjoyed that. I wouldn't trade that experience for anything else in the world. It was tremendous. Absol absolutely incredible visuals there, sir. Our next question is for astronaut uh, Wakata, and it comes from one of our students, Karen. Kinichua, astronaut Wakata. My name's Karen, and I'd like to know, what is wrong with the satellite that you're retrieving from space? called SS SFU, Space Fly Unit, was launched by a Japanese rocket uh, back in March of uh, last year. And it has been conducting uh, various uh, scientific researches, such as uh, material processing, astronomical observation, and uh, systems which will be used in the space station uh, Alpha, which will start its assembly next year. And uh, they have been conducting uh, very successful experiments, and uh, we successfully retrieved the satellite. And uh, after we go back home on the Earth, uh, the Japanese engineers and scientists will gather a lot of uh, very uh, important data out of the satellite. G gentlemen, our next question comes from Nikita. Konnichiwa, Koichi. In terms of Japanese-U.S. relations, what does this mission hold? What does it hope to improve? What, what, what in, in terms of the U.S.-Japanese relations, the, the joint mission? Are we going to see more joint mission in space? And what are, what are the immediate benefits for both U.S. and Japan, if there are any? Konnichiwa, it's a very good question. And this uh, successful retrieval of the space flight unit uh, was achieved because we had a very good coordination and cooperation between uh, the Mission Control Center in NASA in Houston and also SFU's uh, Mission Control Center in, in Japan. And we showed a perfect teamwork during this retrieval together with the crew members here. And this is one of the very good examples of international cooperation. And I think international cooperation is the most important thing to proceed onto a further frontier in space. And both the United States and Japan are participating in the International Space Station Alpha program, which will start its assembly, as I told you, uh, last, uh, next, next year. And uh, I think this is a very key uh, element of the future in the space program. How far is the reality of an actual space station where different countries will be involved? Is this still in the, uh, in the books, or is it, uh, how far is it going to be, rea to be a reality? That is the U.S., Japan, Russia, the involvement of uh, countries in space, establishing an actual space station. Okay, uh, this uh, International Space Station will uh, start its assembly next year, late next year. And the participants are United States, Canada, Europe, Japan, and also Russia. Do you hope to invite us sometime in the future, that is South Africa, if we become involved in the space camp, uh, space initiative? When I was a 
When I was five years old, I saw the Apollo lunar landing, and for me, it was just a dream at the time. But now, the world is changing, and I think it's it's very. Uh, I feel very happy that I'm involved in this space program, and I feel and I hope that uh, many more people from around the world will be able to partic participate in this uh, activity in space. Arigato, astronaut Wakata. Thank you very much. Our next question comes from. Sashin, and it's um, for you, astronaut Brian Duffy. Hi, Mr. Duffy. This is Sashin. You all said that the last uh, spacewalk was 25 years ago. This walk was before you all. Why has it been so long since the next space mission or next, uh, since this moonwalk? Yeah, the, uh, the last moonwalk was... Uh, was approximately 25 years ago, that's right. And um, it turned out that uh, the space program of the United States, um, after that time, after we had been to the, to the moon a number of times, it continued on to the next step of uh, space exploration, and that was to create a vehicle that could regularly ex exit the Earth's atmosphere and make it to space to carry cargo and people into space and be able to do it uh, easily, be able to go up and to be able to come down. Uh, so they, the United States set out to build the first reusable space vehicle, and that's the uh, space shuttle, which we're aboard uh, right now as we speak. Um, so we did need to continue going back uh, to the moon. We could have, and we perhaps uh, we have a lot to learn yet. However, at the time when they made that decision uh, back in the 1970s, their decision was to build a reusable vehicle that we could get to space and back uh, regularly. So. That's where we are today. We have a great future ahead of us. We have a lot of great things to do. We really do look forward to going back to the moon. We do look forward to going to Mars. We, I don't think they're that far away, and uh, we're very anxious to get there. This is Scott Ruddlesberger in Washington. Commander Duffy, uh, thank you very much, as well as uh, Winston Scott and Koichi Wakata for joining us today. And also thank you to our... It's certainly our pleasure. Thank you for coming aboard and sharing this uh, space with us. In Johannesburg, uh, Houston, thank you very much for sharing the spaceflight experience with us. Endeavor is approaching Hawaii at this time, but in uh, about 45 minutes at 26 after the hour, they will be above Johannesburg. It will be in the daylight. You will not be able to see them, but they will sure appreciate the view of your beautiful country. And thank you, Endeavor. Thank you, Houston. 